I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I trust you're ready for some geeky goodness from the doctor. <laughs> we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com if it's tech. It's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. And by the way, if you haven't been to our blog recently, you should go there. It's drbill.cc dot c c for computer curmudgeon. Yes. So let's get right into the blog, shall we? And that is first of all, our first item is a great reminder that a new version of Durcaster is out. Now, last week I talked extensively and gave you a demo of Media Lister, which is our newest open source project. You know, I'm all about the open source, and we'll talk more about that as we get into this week's netcast. But, last week was Media Lister. This week, we want to talk briefly about Durcaster. And I'm not going to do a whole demo of it, because we've done that before. But Durcaster is new and improved. Slightly new, slightly improved. <laughs> we've gone to .9G as the release. I just can't quite bring myself to say one yet. I'm getting there. I'm getting very close. <laughs> but at any rate, so Durcaster, this is a new and improved version. It has some bug fixes in it. It has uh, the newest, latest feature is that you can put your uh, media files, like your MP3 files, in a separate directory rather than the directory that Durcaster lives in. Okay? So you can put them in a separate directory, which is kind of nice. You know, if, you, if you're one of those organized kind of guys and don't want to just throw it all in there like I do. <laughs> yes, well, I'm a little more organized than that, but still, that is a new feature from Durcaster. And uh, I definitely want to thank Lars, who is one of the contributors to the Durcaster project, for coming up with the bug fixes and the new feature. So there. You can check that out at our Durcaster website, which is, of course, D-I-R-C-A-S-T-E-R, Durcaster.org, as it says right on the screen. Also, talking about Media Lister last week, Media Lister, not Lister. <laughs> get, my, get my mouth working. Anyway, I have... Improve the drbill.tv site, so it's been updated. So I mentioned that in the newsletter, uh, in the blog newsletter. Newsletter makes it sound like it's just so big and huge. Anyway, it's a blog. Uh, drbill.tv website has been spiffified. I just made up a new word. And what we did there <clears throat> is <clears throat> get my throat clear. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, we've spiffed it up, and we're going to see new things on there. Like the images of each netcast will be there now, as opposed to the old just showing you the, you know, the main screen and no Dr. Bill looking odd. I'm good at that. Anyway, I don't know. Next item, super expensive game development software is now free. This is a very strange article. Apparently there is a gaming software development tool called Thinking Worlds. Thinking Worlds. Sounds very spiffy, doesn't it? Anyway, the software cost 4900 $99.99. They might as well just say $5,000. So the software costs $5,000. Guess what? I ain't bought it. <laughs> well, nobody is at this point because they decided to just give it away. You know, here's a clue, guys. If you sell software for $5,000 and nobody buys it, it's because your software is too expensive. So they just went the whole other extreme, and now they're just giving it away. So, 
Caspian Software made this product called Thinking World, still does, with the, which the company describes as a globally unique 3D Sims and game engine and authoring environment. Sounds impressive. Anyway, the product lets both beginners and advanced game makers create and publish games quickly and easily and even publish to iPad and iPhone. Pretty cool. So if you've got the next Angry Birds idea in your head, maybe you should download the software for free and try making it. Yes. Two phrases of the word there. Make the software and make it. As in, you've arrived. Okay, anyway. Next item. Robots with a sense of touch. That's weird, I think. Getting all touchy-feely with a robot? No. No, not me. Actually, <clears throat> you know, it does make some sense. If you're a robot, you need to have a sense of touch. Like if I go to pick up this uh, this Diet Pepsi, <laughs> which I was drinking before I started the netcast. At any rate, if I go to pick it up, it's nice to have that sense of touch to know that I'm touching it and, and I don't need to squeeze because then you end up with a can of Coke that gets all crinkled like that. It's still got Coke in it. I'd better be careful. It's not Coke, it's Pepsi. I know. Somebody will write me and say, I thought that was Pepsi, not Coke. I know it's Diet Pepsi, but I call all soft drinks Coke. It's just one of those things I do. I just grew up with Coke, you know? Never mind. Anyway, I this is the next item. I numbers are falling, but so is Firefox. Now, this is because at the first of each month, they have the web browser usage data from net applications are released. And IE, Internet Explorer, has dropped in usage statistics, statistics again. But so has Mozilla Firefox. Dude. But that's, I think, because Chrome is so cool. Everybody should be using Chrome anyway. So there. Um, let's see. LibreOffice, next item. LibreOffice 3.4.1 is released. Now, just last week we talked about 3.4. 3.4.1, as the name might imply, is a maintenance release because they found some bugs since 3.4. But remember, 3.4 is for those cutting edge folks like myself that just wants to live on the edge. You know, I'm just one of those guys that live on the edge. Anyway, 3.3.3 is the stable release, boring, that businesses should use, as opposed to those of us that like to be out there right on the cutting edge of, whoa! Yes, the Geek Software of the Week, this week, is Xboot. It likes to surprise me. It just jumps right in there when I'm in the middle of something. Anyway. Xboot is a tool. I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> it's a tool that you can use to... I misspelled Linux. I can't believe it. Let me fix that while I'm I'm going to stop everything and fix the fact, the fact that I misspelled Linux. My fingers just get to jumping around and... They just do odd things. You know, I mean, sometimes you just got to type... I'm not that great at typing anyway, so I fixed it. Now, unless you were in that short period between the time I first posted it and now, as I record this on a Saturday, then you would never know that I misspelled Linux. I'm sorry, Linus. Anyway, so if you want to run multiple Linux distros from one large USB stick, you know, because it takes a little bit of space, Get yourself a USB stick and get this utility called Xboot. Xboot will allow you to create multi-boot USB ISOs. You may have seen many bootable ISO files like Linux Live CDs, antivirus rescue CDs, etc. Xboot can, can combine these ISO files into one multi-boot ISO file, which is cool in and of itself, or 
create a multi-boot USB <clears throat> with just a few clicks. You can drag and drop ISO files into Xboot and create an ISO or create the USB button, one or the other. I have a screenshot there for you. So, cool stuff, huh? Now, I'm going to do something very odd that I don't normally do. And that is I want to talk about some tech news that I didn't blog about. I just didn't. It wasn't exciting enough to me to blog about. But I can talk about it because talk is cheap. <laughs> you know what I mean? So let me, let me cover a few things here. Google might buy Hulu and make it TiVo 2. So Google's going to maybe do some interesting things there. Buying Hulu. I kind of want them to buy Hulu because I think Google has a better better grip on what people do with their video tech since they run YouTube as well and maybe they'll incorporate the Hulu-ness into YouTube the old YouTube maybe anyway uh, <laughs> that was just one of, of many things I wanted to kind of mention also let's see um, uh, yeah, we talked about that. Uh, oh, Google cleans up Gmail, and it looks really good. Basically, I went to look at this. See, I was going to blog about this. But then I went to look at it and found out they didn't really change Gmail all that much. All they did is they added a new, um, what do you call it, theme skin that makes it look more like Google X, the old... Google X simpleness. Eh. I mean, that's interesting, but not great. Anyway, um, also there was a there was a there was a note here about cyber criminals creating the perfect botnet. Now a lot of people talked about this, and I almost I came that close to blogging about it, but you know, it also just didn't excite me enough to really want to blog about it. Yeah, I don't know if I'm getting lazy or what, but some things just don't get the old creative juices flowing, you know what I mean? Anyway, this is about a giant monster botnet that's called the TDL botnet. It contains 4.5 million computers. That's a lot of computers. Now, all these computers are not voluntarily sitting out there going, Hi there, you can use me to take over the world. No. These are all computers that have been infected with the botnet virus malware. And then people are using their CPU, CPU to inflict it upon other computers and do all kinds of other malicious terriblenesses. So anyway, it says up until now, those fighting against botnets have had some measurable success in taking them down. However, the newest botnet on the block may be a hard nut to crack, and at least one security firm is calling it nearly indestructible. Yikes. Kapersky Labs, which I'm down with Kapersky Labs, I think they do a good job, says the TDL botnet contains about 4.5 million computers and uses a variety of measures to avoid detection by antivirus programs. Furthermore, communications between an infected PC and the host are encrypted, they get this. The botnet is encrypting the communications, making it harder to decode what the botnet may be doing, and it disables other malware. This thing disables other malware in favor of itself. I mean, come on. This is pretty sophisticated. And I like this line. It says, essentially, when it comes to the TDO botnet, there can be only one. <laughs> That's pretty good. TDL first serviced in 2008 and has since gone through four separate revisions, each arm aimed, not armed, aimed at making the software more impenetrable. It is spread through a network of affiliates. Oh, no, this is interesting. Spread through a network of affiliates who are paid anywhere between $20 and $200 for every 1,000 installs of TDL that are completed. So people out there who have malicious websites are getting paid to spread this evil. Dude, as a webmaster, I am offended. So there you go. Anyway, this kind of stuff just is... It just bugs me, you know? I mean, 
People should be nice and kind and sweet and help one another. That's what I think. Anyway, I just wanted to mention some of this stuff for this week's geek news, tech news, whatever I'm trying to say. So, oh, by the way, I've heard from a few people that say that uh, they would like to see us try a live show. So here's what we're going to do. I normally do these on a Saturday morning. Next Saturday morning, I will send out a newsletter blip <laughs> to everyone and mention it on Facebook that you can join me at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. That's next Saturday morning. What's the date on that? Let's actually look it up. Doo -doo 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 -doo. July the 9th. July the 9th, 10 in the morning, Eastern Time, of course, because I'm in Eastern Time. And I'll try a live program. And this is as live as it can be since I'm recording it and not stopping to correct things like some people do. If I did that, it wouldn't be nearly as funny, right? Yes. So, so next, it's a date, right? Next Saturday, 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll try a live show and we'll see how it works. Should be very interesting. We'll also see whether or not that becomes the official DrBill.TV netcast for the week or whether we just do it and go, boy, that was a bust. So, join me then. Until then, remember that the doctor is out of here.